Twelfth Night was penned between 1601 and 1602 and first graced the public stage on 2 February, 1602, in Middle Temple Hall, London, during the celebration of Candlemas. The play was published in the first folio of 1623 and is notable for its exceptional textual clarity, as observed by W. W. Gregg in 1955, in the Shakespeare First Folio. This clarity is attributed to the minimal misalignment of verse and consistency in spelling and phrasing, issues that commonly plagued First Folio texts. Owing to the remarkable precision of the published text, scholars frequently conclude that Twelfth Night was transcribed directly from Shakespeare's foul papers, his original manuscript drafts. Nonetheless, the play did contain several misprints, which were subsequently corrected in the second folio edition of 1632. As with most of Shakespeare's oeuvre, Twelfth Night draws its inspiration from a judicious and imaginative amalgamation of other known works, mythological and classical narratives, folklore, ceremonies, and Shakespeare's own literary corpus. Scholars often cite the Italian play, Glignanati, or The Deceived Ones, written by the Academy of the Intranati in 1531, as a significant source of inspiration for Twelfth Night. However, there is some debate over this connection, as the play was never translated into English nor studied in British schools, leading some to argue that Shakespeare would not have had access to the text. Despite these contentions, the similarities in plot are striking. Glignanati features a young woman, Lelia, in love with a gentleman, Flaminio, who in turn loves another woman, Isabella. Lelia disguises herself as a man, calling herself Fabio, to serve as Flaminio's page. Fabio is tasked with delivering love letters to Isabella from Flaminio, but in a twist of fate, Isabella falls in love with Fabio, unaware that Fabio is actually Lelia in disguise. By substituting these names with Viola, Orsino, and Olivia, one essentially reconstructs the primary plot of Twelfth Night. While the narrative of Glignanati bears a remarkable resemblance to Twelfth Night, there remains considerable debate regarding Shakespeare's access to the text. Consequently, scholars also consider Barney Brish's prose tale Apollonius and Scylla, from his collection Farewell to the Military Profession from 1581, which Shakespeare would have certainly read. This story shares key narrative elements with the deceived ones and brings us closer to Twelfth Night with the addition of a new ending. The resolution of mistaken identities and relationships in Apollonius and Scylla closely mirrors the denouement of Twelfth Night. In the tale, Juliana claims that Silvio, a disguised young woman named Scylla, spent the night with her. Silvio reveals her true identity as Scylla and professes her love for Apollonius. Apollonius reciprocates, and they marry. The real Silvio arrives, and he and Juliana are likewise married. In examining the historical context and influences of the play, one must not overlook its title. Throughout the late 16th and early 17th centuries, England witnessed a persistent ideological struggle between the Puritans, who sought to purify the Church of England, and the broader society. Particularly the Catholics. Puritans were vehemently opposed to revelry and the theater, regarding artists with the same disdain as criminals, a sentiment that ultimately led to the closure of theaters in 1642. Each year, the Catholic calendar dedicated one night to lawful disorder, known as Twelfth Night, during which Puritans endeavored to suppress the revelry. 
This night was marked by celebrations where servants dressed as their masters, men donned women's attire, and vice versa, and people paraded through the streets in feasting and merrymaking. This festive and carnivalesque tradition likely influenced Shakespeare's gender-bending plot, paralleling the ideological clash between Malvolio and Sir Toby Belch and his band of revelers. This conflict is vividly depicted in the text, resonating with Shakespeare's audience. Malvolio's reprimand, My masters, are you mad, or what are you? Have ye no wit, manners, nor honesty, but to gabble like tinkers at this time of night? Do ye make a alehouse of my lady's house? From Act 2, Scene 3, is countered by Sir Toby's retort, Dost thou think, because thou art virtuous, there shall be no more cakes and ale? The title of Twelfth Night alludes to the Twelfth Night of Christmas, also known as the Eve of Epiphany. The title of Twelfth Night alludes to the Twelfth Night of Christmas, also known as the Eve of Epiphany. This day commemorates the visit of the Magi to the infant Jesus and is traditionally marked by a temporary suspension of social rules and norms. The play itself embraces this theme, delighting in the subversion of conventions and general revelry. In the Church of England, the Twelfth Night, observed on January 5th, was celebrated with songs, chalk inscriptions on doors and the consumption of a special cake known as the Three Kings or Twelfth Night Cake. A popular custom involved hiding a pea and a bean within the cake. The man who discovered the bean was declared the Lord or King of Misrule, while the woman who found the pea became the Lady or Queen of Misrule. The Lord of Misrule, typically a peasant or commoner, presided over the drinking and debauchery, as Twelfth Night was one of the rare occasions when servants mingled with their masters. Sometimes even exchanging roles through disguises or by virtue of the coveted bean. Despite the fact that Shakespeare's Twelfth Night clearly reflects the spirit of these celebrations, with the social hierarchy of the play being upended and characters traversing social boundaries with ease, the play itself contains no explicit reference to the holiday. Samuel Pepeus, a member of Parliament and administrator of the English Navy, remarked in his diary after attending a performance of the play on the eve of Epiphany in 1663. That Twelfth Night was acted well, though it be but a silly play, and not related at all to the name or day. While Shakespeare's work omits mentions of the Magi, the Baptism, or the Nativity, it encapsulates the boisterous spirit of the holiday festivities. Characters such as Feste the Fool, Sir Toby Belch, and Sir Andrew Agercheek can be seen as incarnations of the Lord of Misrule, with Maria serving as a counterpart to the Lady of Misrule. Feste's concluding song heralds a return to reality, once the revelries conclude, the audience must face the starkness of winter, where social norms are reinstated and debauchery is no longer tolerated. Thus, Twelfth Night exemplifies Shakespeare's adeptness in adapting narratives to place the Elizabethan audience at the heart of the story.